well, first of all, introduction. I'm, I'm Jesse Myers. I'm with the Smarter Web Company, head of Bitcoin strategy. We are a UTXO uh, portfolio company. Uh, proud to have UTXOs as investors at Smarter Web. We're the UK's leading Bitcoin treasury company and uh, excited about being on the forefront of uh, Bitcoin treasury development uh, globally. I got my MBA at Stanford about 10 years ago. Um, and at Stanford, there's a lot of venture capital um, titans who come and talk. Uh, and w one day, a, a, a name you would all recognize came and spoke to a class and uh, told us about the glory days of venture capital and um, uh, how you had to be there. You just had to be there. Uh, and at the end of the class, a, a classmate of mine asked, so, so what, what is it for us? What can we do? That's the next big thing. Uh, and the VC said, uh, well, there is nothing. Um, the best you can do is, is come work for me. And th that seemed to satisfy the rest of my classmates, but to me it just stuck out that uh, even if you lived through a, you know, the, the new big industry in, in, in finance emerging, you still have trouble imagining how that could ever happen again. Um, so I think that that's, you know, the context by which I, through which I see uh, what's happening with Bitcoin treasury companies right now. Uh, I think that we are seeing the birth of an industry, the birth of the next big um, sub-industry within finance. And, oh boy. <laughs> and I think that, you know, that's a story that will play out over the next two decades. Every generation, there's a a trend, a new industry within finance that emerges that nobody sees coming. Um, back in the day, that was venture capital, and then private equity, and then leverage buyouts in the 90s. Uh, for the last 16 years, it's been Bitcoin. And I think that for the next 20 years, the, the mega trend in finance is going to be the emergence of a new industry of Bitcoin treasury companies. And I think we're at the very beginning of that journey. So we'll jump ahead to where I see this going, and then I'll walk you through how we're gonna get there, what, what my mental model is for why uh, this is going to happen. This is where we're at today. Uh, most Bitcoin is, is held by uh, not Bitcoin treasury companies. And I believe that over the next 20 years, we're gonna go to this future state where perhaps half of all Bitcoin is held by Bitcoin treasury companies. Uh, and in that time, Bitcoin has greatly monetized, becoming uh, a $280 trillion asset class overall, meaning that Bitcoin treasury companies will, I think, accumulate $140 trillion of Bitcoin over the next 20 years. I think that um, strategy goes from the massive winner right now in the Bitcoin treasury space to you know, half of the market share in the Bitcoin treasury companies. And that would mean a quarter of all Bitcoin. Uh, so five million Bitcoin um, that I think strategy will accumulate over the next two decades. And then the other half of that is the rest of the Bitcoin treasury companies in the world that are emerging now. Um, and I think the lion's share of that will be from the um, leading Bitcoin treasury company in each capital market in the world. Uh, and together, that would, would make Bitcoin treasury companies a $140 trillion um, industry by value, which would be, make it the most valuable industry in the world. And it would make strategy a $70 trillion company, which would make strategy the most valuable company in the history of the world by a large margin. So that's where I think we're going, and now we'll walk through how we get there in terms of the logic here. So this is our starting point. This is my global asset uh, landscape chart um, that you may have seen. Right now, Bitcoin is 0.2% of global asset value, just $2 trillion in a $1,000 trillion asset ocean. Um, Michael Saylor has run with this aspect ratio. It's great. Uh, has run with this um, framework and has asserted that half of all 
of value in the world. It's just looking for the best store of value asset. And Bitcoin is it for, because of its properties that we won't go into here. But um, he believes that you know, because of that, Bitcoin will continue to um, monetize, to siphon value away from these other buckets uh, as it saturates the store of value use case for value in the world. So using this framework, Saylor has you know, built his own model, the Bitcoin 24 model, which is based on my framework. And, and uh, he believes that in 20 years, Bitcoin will grow to become 7% of global asset value from 0.2%. That would make Bitcoin here $280 trillion asset class as the entire pie grows significantly. Um, and, but overall, the, the asset composition hasn't changed that much. It's just that Bitcoin has grown and, and is still growing. Importantly here, um, Bitcoin will not have reached its end state of where it is going. It's just where it will be 20 years from now. Um, and it will continue to siphon off more and more store of value capital from these buckets in the years that follow. Okay, so um, if Sailor is right, and Bitcoin is growing to become 7% of global asset value. What does that look like? How do we get there? What's the trajectory there? This is uh, a chart from Saylor's model of the growth rate that he expects for Bitcoin over the next 20 years per year, going from 50% a year down and declining every year to a terminal growth rate of 20% a year. And over the next 20 years, that gets you to $13 million per Bitcoin. So, um, that's his expectation of how this will track through time. And we can take a look now at uh, global asset value has been shifting recently to see if we're on track. So the, my, my first uh, analysis I put out for uh, the global asset landscape was from 2023. And uh, I just updated it this spring for 2025. Um, ran the, the same analysis and, and figured out <laughs> how much value is in each of these buckets now, two years later. Uh, and so you can see the rate of change from you know, two years ago to now uh, in each of the buckets, and we can track that against Saylor's expectations, which are in the black columns here. Um, for, his, for his expectations for um, Kager's for the next 20 years. So, so Saylor's expectations for Kager's um, include a 7% total growth rate for, for the, uh, for the ent entire global asset landscape per year for the next 20 years. My analysis showed that uh, we have been growing it at 6% a year for the total, total global asset landscape. But th I think that the most instructive thing here is to take a look at, at how the buckets have been uh, growing on a relative basis, relative to the overall growth um, of the total asset landscape. And that reveals that bonds and money have been shrinking relative to everything else. Um, and that's in line with Saylor's expectations broadly, that he thinks that uh, bonds um, in particular are, is what will shrink as Bitcoin grows. Um, and putting this into a heat map, this is what we've seen over the last two years, where um, global asset value has been going from bonds and money, fiat assets, and flowing to uh, hard money assets of, of Bitcoin and gold. Um, and that is the key, I think, to understanding what's going on in the global asset landscape and where Bitcoin treasury companies come in. So, Saylor figured this out years ago, that this is happening for structural reasons, uh, and he has designed strategy into its new iteration uh, as a Bitcoin treasury company that has created pipes to tap into the value sitting in these other um, buckets, these you know, equities, bonds, and, and now money market with the, the new stretch product. Um, and and strategy is a, is a capital pump to accelerate the osmotic flow that we saw on the last slide of uh, how value is flowing from fiat assets to hard money assets. And 
strategy is now a pump to accelerate that, that osmotic flow to, um, by creating these products. This model is um, a prototype, um, a new paradigm for, for a, a Bitcoin treasury company and how it can be constructed to, to make a business built around this structural shift from fiat assets to hard money assets over the coming years. Uh, and yeah, and um, so that model of helping to accelerate the flow of capital via these products that are designed by a Bitcoin treasury company and introduced to the market to offer what the market is looking for in fixed income. In, in the case of fixed income, that looks like um, you know, strife and stride being eight to 10% uh, dividend payments when you know, the fixed income market is accustomed to getting single digit um, you know, 4% yields and strategy comes along and offers a product that does the same thing but offers way better rates because it's powered by Bitcoin. So this is why Bitcoin treasury companies are special. Um, to deliver Bitcoin yield, which is the goal of a Bitcoin treasury company, is to compound the, the Bitcoin per share um, you know, uh, on that balance sheet. To do that, you, you, need to, uh, you need to have three things. You need to have access to capital markets, you need to have an incentive to create products to ingest capital and buy Bitcoin and deliver Bitcoin yield. And you need a, a mandate to focus on Bitcoin yield. And that's why when you think about entities in the in, in investment landscape, who is going to create a, a, a business around delivering Bitcoin yield, it's Bitcoin treasury companies because they have these three things and no other entity has um, you know, all three requirements. So if, if you also think about um, how Bitcoin fits into the global asset landscape, what are the properties of Bitcoin uh, in the investable universe? It's the best asset out there for, you know, because it is a scarce asset, it has increasing scarcity built into it in its early stage in its global adoption. But now there's something that from an investment point of view uh, is better than, than Bitcoin itself, and that's Bitcoin treasury companies. If you can tolerate the risk that comes with them, you can achieve Bitcoin yield because Bitcoin treasury companies are all about compounding Bitcoin per share. Uh, and as Michael Saylor likes to say, the only thing better than Bitcoin is more Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin treasury companies are unique in the investable landscape uh, as the only products that, um, that are designed to increase your Bitcoin ownership over time by using capital market tools to do what individuals cannot do, which is you know, raise fiat capital and then buy Bitcoin in an accretive manner. Uh, and this story is playing out globally, right? So we've seen strategy as the, the pioneer in the US and now we're seeing uh, leadership um, emerging in every capital market in the world as, you know, as the Bitcoin treasury company landscape takes shape. There's now 200 or so Bitcoin treasury companies in the world, uh, and this model works everywhere, right? Like every capital market in the world has, uh, has fixed income and equities capital and, and money market capital that's, all of it is looking for the best place to, you know, the, the best asset to park value. Uh, and Bitcoin is it, and Bitcoin treasury companies can build the, that piping for hyper-Bitcoinization um, to help accelerate that flow of capital in each of these local jurisdictions. So summing it back up, um, because of the, the incentives in place for a Bitcoin treasury company and the tools that are available to uh, public companies to raise capital and buy Bitcoin and, and offer Bitcoin yield, I believe that Bitcoin treasury companies will be the disproportionate, uh, the preferred vehicles by which capital will access Bitcoin. And, um, you know, if you think about who's gonna be the bidder for Bitcoin when Bitcoin is $5 million per coin, 
it's going to be strategy because they just tapped into the next trillion dollars in the fixed income market uh, by offering them 10% uh, dividends. Uh, and they're going to take that trillion dollars of capital and buy Bitcoin at $5 million per coin and ingest you know, that much more Bitcoin into their balance sheet. So if you play that same story out, the same mental model of the pipes um, t siphoning capital out of the analog store of value buckets and helping it find a better home in Bitcoin all over the world, that's going to be the basis for this new industry that is going to emerge over the next 20 years uh, and become the most valuable industry in the world. Thank you.